and the Mac Volleyball Tournament is just a few hours away. We'll be taking off this Friday morning at 11 a.m., which means we're here inside studio for Q30 Sports to break it all down for you. You see the bracket on your screen. My name is Eric Kerr alongside Gage Kilborn. We have been the, the Quinnipiac Volleyball Beat Reporter this year, but the Mac Volleyball Tournament is for everyone outside of Quinnipiac, so we're here to break it all down. Gage, you ready to go? I'm looking forward to it. Like you said, we've followed this team all throughout this season, and now it's time for the Mac Tournament. Let's begin. Yeah, well, I think the video gave away my first pick here, but I'm going to go with Fairfield, the number one seed in that first round because of someone like that, KJ Johnson. You see the video. She's out there blocking and making some big kills, finding the holes to the block. She is an explosive player for this Fairfield team. MAC Player of the Year this year. It has a prior NCAA tournament success. It was even a part of the 2019 NCAA tournament team, the Baylor Bears, and she was back with them. That was the number one seed in all of volleyball. You see the stats right here on your screen as well. MAC Player of the Year this year. She was third in the MAC in hitting percentage with .326, second in kills at .439, and first in kills per set. So she is simply a dynamic offensive player. But you can't forget about the others as well. Manuel Nicolina was a three-time MAC Setter of the Year. This is her third straight time winning that award as well. Was first in the MAC in assists per set as well. So she's simply, you know, a great presence. But there are also some solid players across the roster in general. Joel Battles, 10th in the MAC in hitting percentage, alongside three key players in their blocks to help them get first in the MAC in blocks per set this year. Emily Schoenger, Ella Gardner, and Lucy Albertson round out the, the second, third, and fourth spots, respectively. So I think Sienna could give them a tough game, actually, because Sienna technically has the home venue. Look, the UHY Center. We'll get into the second matchup here quick, too. But, you know, I think it's going to be a five set game. Fairfield comes out on top. I think, now, that's actually a good pick. I agree with you on that. And I'll go to Canisius, Niagara. You can tell my pick here is Niagara. Niagara, it's going to be a close battle, the Battle of the Bridge. That's what this big rivalry game is called. This is the third time these teams have faced each other this season. They both won a game at their away, at the away arena. But I think Niagara's going to come out strong because of the defense. Right there, you saw that block right there by the Niagara Purple Eagles. And that kind of shows what to expect with this game. Their defense is one of the top, the top defenses in the, in the MAC. They're ranked number one in digs this season. And they have the libero of the year. And Amanda Darling, the Libero of the Year this award for the MAC, for the MAC, which is impressive for her and for Niagara. So the Niagara going to come away with the victory in this one, three to two. It's going to be a close match, but I think Niagara's going to pull through with a win into the semifinals. I think they always say the mantra is that defense wins championships, and Niagara is full of that outside of Amanda Darling. Her and the whole team, def, DB, uh, team defense alone gives them first in MAC in digs per set. So that's it for the left side of the bracket. We're going to bring Connor Core and Joey O'Donoghue on for the. Right side of the bracket right here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Eric, for that introduction. Like he said, my name is Connor Core, alongside me, Joey O'Donoghue. And we are Joey and I are going to break down the right side of this bracket, uh, Ryder and Iona, Marist and Quinnipiac. Uh, I will just dive right into it. And, uh, number two, Ryder going up against number seven, Iona. My pick for this game is Ryder. For this sole reason right here, as you can see on your screen, Morgan Romano, an all-Mac first team this year, first on the team in kills with 327, second on the team in digs with 194, and third on the team in blocks with 39. You can see right here that she is both an offensive and defensive threat, starting with an offensive kill right here at Quinnipiac, just taking advantage of the Quinnipiac defense right there to finish off that set. A little bit later, she goes right back again with that left hand, gets the another point for that rider team, and you'll see right here just another block showing that offense and defensive skill, and that will be my pick for Ryder. Um, like I said, all back first team, there's only so much that you can do against Morgan Romano and that team as a whole. Uh, she's been leading the team in kills by over about 200 kills, so she's definitely a team that player that they're looking for. And uh, Joey, I'll turn it over to you for this next matchup. All right, thank you, Connor. I'm going to be talking about Quinnipiac versus Maris. These two teams know each other very well, and the last time they met up, what an intense matchup we saw. The Bobcats, though, even though they lost, it was in the fifth set, and they had more points, they had more aces, they had substantially more blocks with 15 to 6, more digs, and they tied in assist. And so when you look at the outcome of this game, it doesn't reflect what we actually saw in the back and forth action that we saw in the Quinnipiac Maris game. And so I'm taking the Quinnipiac Bobcats to upset the Maris Red Foxes here. The Bobcats have won five of their last eight games, and when you talk about versatility, they have some incredible players. Here's Nicole Legg, just named to the All-Mac first team. She leads all of the Mac in hitting percentage, and she's a 6'3 middle blocker. That is incredible. She's also second in the Mac in blocks with 90. And finally, she is third in kills 
for Quinnipiac. She's been absolutely incredible this season. And I talk about the stats where she's in the map, right? And look at this here. Nasty kill there, Nicole Leg, adding to her total. And I talk about these stats, right? She's second in blocks. No player from Marist cracks the top 10. I said she leads all the MAC in hitting percentage. No player from Marist cracks the top 10. And Olga Zampati, another great player for the Bobcats team, top 10 in service aces per set. No player, Connor, from Marist cracks the top 10. So the Bobcats are dominating in a lot of stats here and it does not reflect their seeding. As you see, another great defensive possession here for Quinnipiac, back and forth action. And the Bobcats are certainly poised to make maybe a run in this tournament, as I said. They've won five of their last eight games, and so give me the Bobcats to upset Maris here. Another player you can point to, Kim Zillamo, all-MAC rookie team, and she is seventh in digs per set. Quinnipiac, as a team, is second in digs per set in all of the MAC as well, so credible, versatile players. That's why I'm taking the Bobcats. Now we're going to throw it back to Gage and Eric to debate if Fairfield and Niagara play, what they think is going to happen. Thanks so much, Connor and Joey. And we're back here to break down the semifinals now. Of course, we're sticking with our left side here. We got our winners from the first, Fairfield and Niagara. So, Gage, I'm going to start with you. Who do you think comes out on top in this one? It's hard to say because it's defense versus offense once again with K.J. Johnson going up against Amanda Darling. But you can't go wrong with the high-powered offense of Fairfield as they wear down the defense of Niagara time and time again to come away with a victory 3-1. What do you think on this match? Yeah, so as you see, we have our Fairfield lit up now. They're moving on to the championship. Kind of expected they are the number one team coming in, dominant in a lot of stats. I do agree with you, but also add on to that as well. While we assume, or we talk about Fairfield a lot about their offense, you know, first in the Mac and hitting percentage, first in assists per set, first in kills per set. Their defense shouldn't be ignored either. They're also first in blocks per set. Credit those top three names that I mentioned earlier, Ella, Emily Schillinger, Ella Gardner, and Lucy Albertson for making those big time plays. But you also got to look at other stats as well. They hold their opponents to low numbers in other stats as well. They hold them to the second lowest opponent kills in the game, second lowest in opponent hitting percentage, and second lowest in opponent assists. So, again, they're really all over the place on defense and offense. Make sure they do their thing. And they got a lot of deep players across that roster. While Niagara is really good on defense, their offense may not be the greatest outside of J.C. Roberts. We know how good she is. But the rest of the team has their inconsistencies. When you go against Fairfield, the roster of full of consistencies across the board, then it's tough to really break down and beat them. So I'm also with you as well. I have this one as a, a three to four set match as well of Fairfield coming out on top. So to break down, now the right side of the bracket, we're going to send it back over to Connor and Joey to tell us what they know about that. Thank you, Eric. Once again, this time Joey and I will be breaking down the semifinals for this MAC Volleyball Championship between number two seed Ryder Bronx and number six seed Quinnipiac Bobcats. Now, Joey, in the quarterfinals, I started off, so I'll be a gentleman and hand this over to you this time. Thank you, Connor. I'd love to, and I'd also love to pick the Quinnipiac Bobcats to come out with a win here. They've shown great fight this season, but how can you not pick the Ryder Bronx? That is going to be my pick to win this game. When you look at the stats in comparison to all the MAC, the Ryder Bronx are second in kills per set. They are first in service aces, and they are just dominating statistically across a lot of the MAC. Besides Fairfield, we're going to talk about later in the show, of course. But this is not an underestimation of Quinnipiac. They've got a lot of versatile players, and I would not be surprised if this comes down to the fifth set. I think we're going to have an intense matchup here. The Bobcats have some versatile players. I talked about Nicole Leg earlier. I haven't shown some love to Ariana Diaz. Let's bring her up now because she, when she was a freshman, she was eighth in the nation in triple doubles. I mean, what is this, basketball? <laughs> She's doing everything out there for the Bobcats. And as I mentioned, Nicole Leg leading all of the MAC in hitting percentage. But you can't ignore a lot of these Ryder Broncos. I mean, their star player is leading the MAC in kills out of every single player there. And so it's hard to ignore this two seed and not pick them to win. But I do think this is going to come down to the last kill. Yes, I do agree with you, Joey. I'm going to pick Ryder as well in this matchup for the, a lot of the reasons you say. But I will agree that it will come down to the fourth or fifth set. I don't think Quinnipiac will be going down without a fight. We know head coach Kyle Robinson loves to talk about fighting until the end, right until that last point. And if you notice, uh, they're, like you keep mentioning, they are a very offensive team. And the Bronx have aver out averaged their opponents 12.5 to 11.1 in kills per game. And you and I both know that one point can mean a difference between a win or a loss in any sport, any sport, no matter what it is. But for this reason, I am going to stick with the Ryder Bronx over the Bobcats in this game, and they will move on to the championship matchup to go against, uh, against the first-seeded Fairfield.
Yeah, Connor, but again, you cannot sleep on this Bobcats team. They are third in assists per set in the MAC, fourth in kills per set in the MAC, fourth in service aces, but Ryder still leads them in all those categories. So now we're going to send it back to Eric and Connor to discuss the MAC championship. All right, we have our championship game right here. You see them on your screen. Number one, Fairfield. Number two, Ryder. The two best teams in the tournament, the two best seeds. Most likely end up here, but what could be the result? Connor, we'll start with you. Why do you think Ryder should win? It's been your team through the through yes, the round. Yes, like you mentioned, I have picked Ryder throughout, and I kept mentioning Morgan Romano, but there is another player on the team, as a matter of fact, as we all know. It's not just one player that makes a team win. It is a combination of one, or it's multiple players, excuse me. But I'm going to go with... Uh, Annalise Shear, she has led the team in aces with 737 aces on the season. Just to give you a little context, the next closest player on that Ryder team has 68. That shows you how much, they can, how much you can trust her to go get a point when your team needs it most. So that's where I'm going to pick Ryder, but I'm sure you have some very good statistics to back up why you think your team, Fairfield, is going to win. Well, I mean, outside of them just being number one, you know, I sound like a broken record when I say this again. They get everyone else involved, number one assists. The blocks are crazy, number one in the blocks, in blocks per set in the MAC, number one in kills per set in the MAC. I could go on with the stats, but one thing I do want to mention in terms of the matchup history as well is that Fairfield is owned rider this season. 2-0 and in the year, and have won six straight sets that they have played. So Fairfield has had the number so far throughout the regular season, and I think it's going to be the same way in the championship. Cue it up for the finals, Fairfield. We'll take it up on top. Your MAC champions, the Fairfield Stags. I think this is going to be a great game, though. We'd be shocked if it's not a four or five set match between these two. I love both teams, but I think Fairfield's been the most dominant team of the year. They'll be the representation of the MAC for the NCAA tournament. But, of course, we may not be able to predict everything right, so make sure you watch the rest of the MAC coverage yourself. First game will be going off at 11 a.m. Quinnipiac will start off its first game at 8 p.m. at the UHY Center. But this is all for the Bractology Special for myself, Eric Kerr alongside Connor Kaur and our other two guys participating, Joey O'Donoghue, E.H. Kilborn. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoy what we got.